had to include two future firsts just to get off of Goff's contract. But now you got a fresh start for both these guys, for Goff and for Stafford. Brandon, I'll start with you. Do the Rams now yeah. become instant Super Bowl contenders next season with Ooh. Matt Stafford under center? Yeah, Jenna, I think so. Uh, the Rams are in a win-now mode every single year. McVay has never had an opportunity to, to utilize the number one pick uh, uh, since golf. Golf, too, you know, that was the last the time they had a first-rounder. Yep. Now, you, now you move forward. The next time you'll be able to pick in a first-rounder as of now is in 2024. So that tells you their attitude and their approach. They have everything they need to get the job done. Matthew Stafford, I wouldn't call him elite because when you think about elite, elite guys make everyone better and he just transformed their organization. He has he didn't do that in Detroit, but he has elite skills. This dude is still legit. I talked to Kenny Galladay uh, last night and I said, man, can this dude still get it done? And he said, absolutely. This dude is still a monster. He can make all the throws and he's relatable and he's a great leader. You cannot, if you're the Rams, waste what you have on that defensive side. We hear it all the time. Defense wins championships, Nick. And you have, uh, uh, you have two of the best that can that 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 is doing it at a high level right now in the National Football League. So you can't waste those guys. Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald on that side. Go get Matthew Stafford. Great job. Now go get it done and make your run. So Brandon, what do you always call me our resident GM, right? You always say you're a yep. resident player, I'm the resident GM. The resident GM part of me has some reservations. Now, I, the, the oh, analyst says they're, they're better. They're without a doubt better. They were going to go into next season with the worst quarterback in their division. You can't do that. You now have, even if Stafford is just the 12th best quarterback in football, that's a massive upgrade from our friend Jared Goff, and it gives them a chance to compete. So I understand why you would make this move. But Les Snead is trying to run a football team in a different way than any team has ever been run in the history of the league. Right. Maybe it'll work, but it is risky. Here are six names. Stafford, Ramsey, Donald, Cup, Woods, Whitworth. Those six players are $110 million of their cap next year. You then add Goff and Gurley's dead money, who aren't on the team, that's $30 million. So we're now at $140 million of a cap that's going to be about 180 for six guys. So you're going to have 40 million bucks for your other 45 players. That's tough. And it also leaves no margin for injury, and you can't recoup it with young talent in the draft because, as Brandon mentioned, they are going to go from Jared Goff in 2016 until 2024, two presidential terms, without a first-round pick. So it is... A massive swing. I understand why they did it, because they thought they could not win with Goff, and Goff's contract was a disaster. But these swings catch up to you eventually, Wilds. He swung on Brandon Cooks, then ended up trading him away. You swing, you Todd Gurley, you pay him early, you cut him. Jared Goff, you pay him early, you trade him away. So I, I think they are better. I also think it is an incredibly risky way to run a franchise if you care at all about future you. Yeah, so do you mm. like it, Nick? That's my question, because I do. I think we see so many teams <laughs> planning for the future. The Packers are planning for the future. The Patriots are always planning for the right. future, and it kind of bit us this year. So for me, if I'm Aaron Donald, if I'm Jalen Ramsey, I'm like, yeah, I like this kind of stars and everybody else concept. The problem is this. We saw Aaron Donald get some bruised ribs, and that was it. They were cooked. There is no sort of Correct. next man up philosophy. So me personally, I like it. Do you like the philosophy, Nick? Take your, take your analytics resident GM brain out of it. And just like personally, do you like this team going all in? I prefer this method, Brandon, than the teams that always say, we can't do anything, we're hamstrung. We can't, or we're up against yep, the cap. Right. I, I would prefer this right. extreme to the other extreme. But I do think there's an argument to be made that somewhere in the middle, 
not going nearly a decade without first round picks <laughs> and not <laughs> having what? such a top heavy roster because well, Nick, Wilds is right. They can't sustain an injury, Brandon. They are they are at the top of the right. list of teams that cannot sustain an injury. I think the biggest challenge is managing the cap, right? So everything you said there, you have six, seven guys, and that's where most of your money is going. So how do you continue to build depth? How do you continue to bring in younger players and that can develop them and that you want to keep around? But I absolutely love this as a player. Like, this draft pick, this first-round draft pick may not help us this year. So going out and getting a, an established quarterback, an sure. established corner, an established wide receivers mean more. The Rams have the mentality that they're always going to be picking in the 20s, 22, 23, yep. maybe, hell, even yep. 28 to 32. Because they in 2018, they went to the Super Bowl. So what does what is right. that draft pick worth? So I love the, the attitude and approach of let's get, a, get away from these first-round picks that may not be able to do anything for us those first round picks at the end of the draft they're hit or miss so going out and getting right. a veteran that can that's already established and can and can help you right now i love it i think this team yeah. uh is, is doing the right thing and i think more people should follow suit the other oh, thing that you said at the very beginning that i just want to revisit quickly is what this once we get past the trade what this does turn into is something of a referendum on matt stafford has Matt Stafford been a good stats, bad team guy, or has he been a guy who the only reason he's on a bad team is because it's the Lions, it wasn't his fault, and if you put him with a good coach, McVay, I think it is, an organization that'll spend money, obviously the Rams are that, you're going to see what his career could have been because this is a big bet on a player who has precisely zero wins that any of us remember. Now, I'm not saying it's his fault, I'm saying it's an unknown, but it's a big bet on a player without a track record of anything other than a lot of empty yards. So we'll see if that was about the Lions right. or about Stafford. All right. Well